Hello and welcome along to the year 2020. Or if you're listening to this in the past, hello, welcome to the past. Uh, <laughs> This is the uh, Where's My Kit Bag podcast uh, featuring the lovely media technicians of the Sixth Form College Farnborough, uh, starring myself, James. May well. And me, Steve. Nice. Was that good? Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> um, sadly, we do have a fallen soldier today. Damn. Insert the sad violin music just for just for him. Uh, Will is Will is off ill with, a, with what I can only describe as... A cough on my level of nastiness, yeah. which is pretty pretty hench cough. Just for clarification, that was me impersonating Will. So if you thought that was Will, I'd be pretty impressed. There you go. Nice. No, there's nothing you've written on the board. I, I, I know. I don't know why I paused. Went, is there anything new on the board this week? <laughs> yeah. No. No. Uh, start time nine oh five. Finish time eleven oh five. Someone clearly sat a mock in here. Yeah. Um, obviously, if you are a CTEC student, you'll be doing your exam today. Because this comes out on Thursday when your exam is. So while you're listening to this podcast, you should be revising, but please keep listening well, to like this Well, like real podcast. exam? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they have the real exam, in our case tomorrow, but in your case today. Jeez. Today, Thursday, the uh, the ninth. Is that first January. year? Uh, yes. Wow. First year's doing uh, Unit 1 and Unit 2. Good luck. The, uh, you can do it. Um, so yes, uh, very good luck to my students in particular. I know some will be listening to this, and they'll be like, oh, James didn't say good luck to us on the podcast. I'll be like, yes, I did. Listen back. As long as you give it 100%. That's so yep. all anybody can ever ask. That's all that matters. All I'm going to say is remember your unit one theorist. Yes. Remember those 12 markers? <laughs> Thumbs up. Um, you can't see that. This is an audio medium. Yep. We really That's why I clarified that I was impersonating Will. Nice. Exactly. <laughs> 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 Sorry. So maybe we need that as a as a as a stinger, just coughs. Yeah. <laughs> uh Steve, shall we uh start off with uh your glorious, glorious take on uh, the department's news? Let's Oh this intro, I forgot about this. <laughs> Over to the newsroom with Steve Kale. Steve. Hello. Oh, I'm not going to be Mr. Anchor this year. Oh, I'm what? Uh, no, is it, is it New Year, New Anchor? New Year. Uh, Less la- Laid back talk show host. Oh, how about all right. that? All right. Are you, are you going more James Corden or Jimmy Fallon? Ellen. Oh, Ellen DeGeneres. Maybe. All right. I like how Ellen. Uh, are you just going to casually bring in like a 48 random, inch TV? Yeah, <laughs> you, get, you, get a, you get a TV and you get a TV. Everyone gets a TV. You get a podcast and you get a podcast. Nice. Speaking of which, actually, it's not on the list, but um, you actually might be better off talking about this than I. I'm going to I'm going to pitch it to you and you All go, right. oh, yes. What did you show me today that was referencing the podcast where our podcast spans 10,000 kilometers? <laughs> yes, it was the, uh, yeah, you know, the Spotify thing uh, does uh, obviously what tracks you've been listening to. Spotify and wrapped. That's it. Spotify wrapped. Um, so I had a look at the Where's My Kit Bag podcast one uh, and almost exclusively all of our listeners are in the United Kingdom except for one in Peru. Yeah. Which made our reach quite wide. It's yes. like 10,700 kilometers of Amazing. reach. Amazing. If you great. listen to our podcast in Peru, I want to know. Yeah. Email I, w- I want to know who you are. Uh, person from Peru, special shout out to you. Um, do email us uh, at technet at farmbro.ac.uk. Let us know what you're up to and how you got hold of the podcast. Or if you were the student or whoever you were, if you were in Peru and now you're back in the UK, just let us know because it's a mystery to us. We want to know how yeah. we got there. Well, otherwise, we're very we're very proud and happy of our Peruvian listenership. Yeah, it's been good. I mean, the only real shame from from Spotify Wrapped was like how much uh, we've been listened to. Uh, SoundCloud was a bit better. I know you'll get onto that into a second, yes. but um, we've actually produced the podcast has over one point two thousand minutes of podcast of like material, which is actually really quite good. Um, and I think it had like uh, a quite a significant amount, more so than I I remembered, uh, than I anticipated for like its first slash second year, which is really good. So shout out to everyone who's been listening. Um, it's actually really nice and humbling to see those actually quite impressive numbers. Uh, SoundCloud actually had a bit more, didn't they? They had like uh, I'm literally logging into the portal as we yeah, speak. Yeah, uh, just what to kind of fill the time while he while he brings it up. Um, it was there was countries that just uh, at least had a little listen from from here there and everywhere, which was really quite nice. Um, but obviously the you know the fundamental is our kind of niche of, of farmer sick form students. But you know if, if you're 
if you're not a student and you somehow stumbled across this, uh, do let us know. Um, we're curious to find out what uh, piqued your interest. Uh, what I would like to do is give a big shout out to our number one listener. That's uh, that's a good segue. Steve Bertles. Congratulations. Do you have a yay? Do you, you've got the you've got the sound uh, clip. I, I mean, I do have a yay, but I, I mean, I have to kill your noise. But I do have that's a, fine. A correct noise. <laughs> uh, I also have a <laughs> nice, amazing. Yeah, congratulations and and shout out to you, Steve. Appreciate that. Yeah, uh, he has he has listened to us more than anyone else mm. by about twenty listens. Nice, and That's... we have he's he's like in the hundreds, so he's clearly gone back and listened to yeah. podcasts again, which uh, is amazing replay value. Consider this uh, being our essentially our number one fan. Come and speak to us, <laughs> our number one fan. Come chat to us. You book in a time. We want you as a guest. It's a personal call out to you now. Um, so yeah, come come and chat to us. We want you as a guest because um, you listen to us so much. Um, so come find us when you can. Let's segue on to my other news. Oh, I, I was I was going to say I finally got the weird country list. Oh up. my god, yes, that's like huge. Let's, let's um, reverse. So just, just to, so our majority of our listeners, over half, uh, is the United Kingdom. Obviously, yep. we're in it. Uh, followed uh, with about I'd say a quarter of the listenership, the United States of America. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, then we've got Ukraine, Mexico, Russia, Germany, Canada, Poland, Brazil, and Vietnam. Are they the top ten? Uh, that is yes, that is the top and ten. How many total countries? Uh, have total at least different in? countries is fifty. Wow! So it says maximum fifty. Wow! So I don't know if that's like cropping people off. Most um, niche one you can see on that uh, list. Most niche one I would gonna have to say is the Federated States of Micronesia. Nice. How many listens? Two. Two listens. listens. That means somebody's heard this and gone, yeah, I love a bit of that. Come back for a second piece, which is great to hear. <laughs> so again, if you're from nice. outside the UK but and you listen to I this. I can tell you what. I know exactly who's been listening in Australia. Who's that? Uh, which is my friend Richard. Nice. Shout out, yeah. Richard. Hello. Hi, Rich. Who's <laughs> the other person that you said might be listening in uh, Mexico? Uh, it's well, you. No, no, he it's said it was you. Yeah, it could have been me <laughs> when I was on holiday. Well, I say holiday. Uh, when I was... Uh, well, it was technically a holiday. It was for a wedding. Um, when I was in Mexico, that could have well have been me. Yeah, showing uh, just off to ju- Just to make sure... Just to give us some extra stats. Nice. Support. Amazing. Um, but yeah, no. SoundCloud's got a much better... Uh, amount of um, uh, detail stats, but otherwise, Farnborough is our most listened to, as it calls it, city. Yeah, uh, I can see 114 there for, for Steve. 100 foot Steve has done 114 listens. Nice. And we have less podcasts than 114. Nice. Which is great. Um, but yeah, otherwise, no. SoundCloud's done us a solid. Cool. Nice. Right. Anyways, on with your news, Steve. Sorry, I've There's a couple in. more things in this segment, actually. I think we're going to have to pad this one out a little bit due to the slight lack in a tech news host. But I believe you're... Are you taking the helm for that? Uh, I may take the helm for tech news. That is true. So let's give you a brief rundown of what's on the newsletter this week. So Film Club, uh, Film Club's back. We actually... Here's an interesting point. So yes. uh, I assume the people that would be going to Film Club may also listen to the podcast. I hope that correlates in some way. Um, there was a bit of controversy about the vote, which Ooh. is quite interesting. Tell um, me more. Basically, uh, Dan uh, reported that a few people in the class were like, can't believe one film won when we voted for another. And then it spread around the room like wildfire. Um, we were like, hey, I voted for, for Taxi Driver as well. So did I. So did I. Um, I am completely honest with you. Uh, with 45.8% of the vote, Get Out did win. There were 45 votes, ironically, in total, which is really, really good for the first ever kind mm. of film club vote. Um uh, second place with 38% was Taxi Driver. I don't have the specific number of, of votes. I only have the percentage, sadly. Um, and then um, with a very measly, I think it was like 7% of the vote um, was uh, was the was the Adam Sandler film, uh, 50 Love something. Love oh, 50 it. First Dates. 50 First Dates, that was it. Um, so yeah, it is Get Out. Uh, I've personally not seen it. I'll be the one who, uh, the member of staff overseeing uh, next week's film club. It is Monday the 13th, uh, running just after college. We'll probably start screening around 20, 25 past um, until, you know, the film finishes. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that. I've heard uh, it's quite an intense film. So do check out the trailer if you haven't seen it. Um, and it is obviously an invitation for anybody uh, at the college if you want to come enjoy uh, a nice film. We're watching Get Out. Um, so do come and join us for Film Club on Monday. Film Club does run, should run once a month, uh, on, you typically on Mondays for the rest of this year anyway. And I send out a batch email uh, to the department, basically getting a nice vote. Um, on TechNet, you can uh, submit film suggestions, and then I have a look at that spreadsheet. I'll pick two films, and then our rep, Aiden, 
Um, we'll pick one of the films as well because he's a film club rep. And then that goes into a vote for about a week. Obviously, over the Christmas period, you've had a lot more time, so there's a lot more votes. Whichever one of those three wins the vote gets screened at Film Club, if you see how that works. So do come and join us. And if you want to get in on the voting, drop me an email and I'll just add you to the uh, to the recipient list. Nice. Uh, that is pretty much it for the newsletter. Uh, last thing as well, uh, TechNet Choice is back. Uh, it's evolved slightly. I think I mentioned it last year. Basically, we found that if you put in the hashtag TechNet Choice, and even if you put it to recent, stuff that was posted originally, i.e., you know, 2017 or early 2018 is is starting to come up again and mix in with the recent stuff so it's a big old mess and it's difficult to tell if uh, a winning student is, is is already graduated or or what so what we've done is um to try and get a bit more uh, influx we've rebranded it to be technet choice 2019 yes i know it's 2020 but um academic we're doing it at the start 19, of the 20. academic year so next year will be technet choice 2020 but for now use the hashtag technet choice 2019 and we're going to pick one monthly winner so that means there's going to be five more january february march april may obviously we're going to stop it in may due to you know, exams and awards and everything like that and if you are one of the lucky winners um in brackets, people who have already won this year also fall into the shortlist. Uh, we'll shortlist three to five um, of the best TechNet Choice winners to be shortlisted for awards night to potentially win an Oscar. Last year, it got the biggest kind of hooray of the, uh, of the did, awards It did night, get the biggest Which was whoop. quite surprising, actually. Now, I, I think the whoop may have also been for you, Steve. Hey, I'll take that. Nice. Oh, and I will I will host that award again. I believe I've kind of... No, we're going to take off you. Bagsy <laughs> that honour. <laughs> Luckily, you didn't do a Ricky Gervais. I didn't. No, I won't be that savage. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's basically that. Check out the other stuff on the news there. 1917 is the film that drops on January 10th, i.e. Friday. Looks great. Um, and segues fantastically uh, because 1917... Uh, did win Best Motion Picture at what awards? The Golden Globes. We're just going to briefly talk about um, the Golden Globes. They are, um, I popped it on the news there. They're an accolade uh, similarly to the Oscars. I'll pr probably say that the Oscars are of a slightly higher caliber, question mark? Mm, yeah, you could say that. Either way, it's, an, it's a very uh, famous and well-respected accolade in the film world, um, and it celebrates uh, you know, people, directors, films, very similarly to the Oscars, if that's anything you're familiar with. But the Golden Globe Awards uh, in Hollywood um, were over the weekend? I think it was Saturday. Yes. Might have been Saturday or yes. Friday. Weekend Either way, in the last week. Um, and I'm just going to read you a few, a few of them, maybe the, the top five, i.e. Best, uh, best films, best director, Best uh, Actress and Actor. Yep. So as I said, 1917 was a great segue because it actually did win Best Motion Picture for Drama. Yes, it did. Um, which was really good. Uh, best mu Motion Picture for Musical or Comedy was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Some people who I've spoken to said that was a great choice. Others uh, closer to home, i.e. Will, um, were not too happy with it. Didn't enjoy it as much. Um, but Will's not here to defend his points. No, so and I haven't seen the film, so I can't really say what much. What have I, actually? Um, um, what have you seen? I've, I've only seen Rocket Man on that list. Actually, uh, no, I haven't even seen Rocket Man. I've, I've seen, seen none of them. none of the films in musical or comedy. No. If you scroll up, I have seen Joker. And I've only that's seen it. Joker. I've only seen Joker. I was supposed to watch The Irishman over the, over the break, um, but a little pact upon my uni friends uh, when I went to go and see them for New Year was like, we'll watch it all together. Um, but uh, I never got around to it. Oh. Let's carry on. Uh, best uh, performance by an actress in a motion picture for drama was Renee Zellweger. Renee Zellweger. Uh, for Judy. Is my, did I say that right? Yep. Um, Judy. Yes. Which is really good. Uh, I see, so, sadly, not for um, uh, Bridget Jones' series. No. <laughs> Evidently not. Uh, and quite uh, expectedly, best performance by an actor in a motion picture for drama was who? Joaquin Phoenix. For Joker. Very, very nice. Um, and the last one we'll just quickly uh, uh, jump well, on to. Yeah. Last two. Oh, I thought I was going to do uh, best performance, yes, uh, for musical or comedy. Actress was. Oh, <laughs> you say. Where is it? It's uh, Orca. Oh, there it is. Oh, it doesn't Awkwafina. have a photo. No, it doesn't have a photo. Oh. But there's a photo there. Interesting. Aquafina. Oh, a bit of a glitch there on the Golden Globes website. Uh, for the You've film been called The Farewell. Nice. Uh, and then best performance by an actor in a motion picture, musical, or comedy was Taron Egerton for Rocket Man. Let's see who won best director. Um, uh, best director, bear with. Here uh, he, best here director he is. for Sam motion picture. Mendes for 1917. He's got two in his lovely photo there with a lovely smile, holding his two Golden Globes. Very well done. Um, nice. So yeah, uh, best screenplay. Might as well Quentin Tarantino. Once upon a time in Hollywood. 
also bagging another one. So there you go. Interestingly, though, a Pixar film didn't win Best Animated uh, yeah, Film. Yeah, see, I've seen all of those films besides the one that won, which was Missing Link. So uh, Best Motion Picture. I've not picture. seen Lion King or Frozen 2. Well, I've seen the original Lion King, obviously. Yeah. You know, the classic. So I would have gone with House Train yeah. of Dragon in the Hidden World because I love that franchise. I think it's awesome. Yes. Um, but yeah. Oh, I would have gone Toy Story 4 purely for Rain and Hair. Yeah. Because that was obscene. Rain and Hair. <laughs> nice. Rain and Hair. Obscene. But yeah. Little in- interjection of the uh, of the awards there for you to keep you nice and updated. Um, go check out 1917. I can't wait to go and see it. It's like, I'm very, very excited. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I've got uh, in this actually quite lengthy tech, uh, not tech news, quite lengthy department news nice. slash industry news in this this case. Um, shall we move on to the, the tech news? Yeah, let's move on to the actual tech news. Well, are you ready? Yes. <laughs> Hello, yes, Tech News. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't do well. Isn't it? Hello, guys. Uh, Welcome to Tech News. Hi, guys. It's the best feature. It's my Tech News with me, Will D. Well, nice. I don't nice. think he's ever called himself Will D. No, but he is now. Nice. He is now the only Will Devro. Please stand up. Nice. Um, he's going to hear this back and be like, what on earth were you doing? Yeah. We got- <laughs> it was funny. Um, so with, uh, obviously, Tech News this week, uh, I picked up a couple of things with Will yesterday. Um, where we just kind of went through some of the tech from uh, CES 2020. What is that? Uh, CES is kind of uh, Imagine Comic Con, but for tech. Yeah, cool. Um, so it's got all the sort of latest technology being released from all the big brands uh, and all the big players in all the world of tech. So a couple of ones to look at first. Uh, Canon uh, are releasing a 1DX Mark III. Interesting. I did a little uh, read into it. Doesn't have in body stabilization. No. doesn't have that. That's one not. of the things it was expecting. But can film 4K. Yeah. It's and can film 5.6K raw, so, apparently. Ridiculous. It's a tank, um, but a lot of the things that people want out of a you know, 2020 camera is that, you know, digital stabilization. And sadly, I think it's... If this came out, you know, a year, a year ago, a year and a half ago, it would have probably stopped people making that transition. But I don't see many people coming back for it. Mm. Like, as in back out of the mirrorless... Yeah way although apparently it can shoot in a mirrorless mode but then the viewfinder doesn't work yeah it's interesting obviously it's being covered yeah it's an interesting one um it, it's amazing like i i feel like i'm get putting putting it down it is amazing uh it's it will do very well um i just don't think i think canon are just a year behind it's like they're, they're just odd like they're still not putting ibis and stuff yeah so when people seem bizarre. to want that well i want it um, I want it now. But yeah, it's it's odd. But it is very impressive. Very, mm. very impressive piece of kit. Uh, otherwise, Nikon are, are sort of paving the way forward with some more lenses, uh, which I've put in very large letters worth a big dollar. Yeah. Um, so they've got two. They've announced uh, a couple of Z series lenses, uh, one of which being a 70 to 200. Uh, I believe that's also an f2.8, very similar to the uh, kind of original white Canon one. Yeah, I was going to say uh, that. It's a big hefty boy, uh, was uh, Will's exact words. Um, it's quite a large a lens on a larger side um, and it's got a very large price tag to go along with it. Any uh, idea roughly? I don't, uh, I don't know. I think it was easily like pushing 3K. Wow. Uh, and that's obviously to go with the Z series of cameras, so the Z50, the Z6, and the Z7. Cool. Uh, and there's also a 120 to 300 mil uh, f4, I think it is, or f2.8, which would be amazing. Uh, which is just uh, a full frame lens on their old uh, lens system, but can obviously work with the uh, newer cameras through one of the adapters. Um, and that was costing nearly eight grand. Wow. Big chunk of glass. Yeah. Um, so that is on the way very soon. Quickly before you move yes. on, because you're talking about Nikon uh, yes. or Nikon. Nikon. Um, yep. You got a chance to get a bit hands on with your new oh, camera. How did, how did that go? Boy. First I, impressions. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 10 out Thin, of 10. Full stop. Let's um, move on. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to do. No. Oh, no. No, I don't want to overwrite the tracks in the car. No, go away. No, I'm clicking the wrong buttons. Yeah. Yeah, it's very much yeah. Happy, happy with the investment. Oh, 100%. Cool. Uh, Good to hear. Yeah, so I was away at New Year's, uh, kind of like Norwich, Norfolk way, yeah. uh, which is quite nice. Uh, we went for a womble around the beach because we were feeling fat from Christmas. So we thought, hey, let's go for a walk. Um, so obviously uh, the kind of north coast of uh, Norfolk's got some nice kind of beaches on it. 
absolute butt ton of seals everywhere. So, because we were like, oh, if we see a seal, that'd be cool. We saw one and we're like, oh, it's a seal. Oh, it's like, it's a baby and it's just sat there. Uh, and then you can see its mother like patrolling the ocean. Nice. Um, or the sea, rather, uh, behind us, kind of like going, going, don't touch my baby. Um, and then you kind of walk like uh, 20 minutes more down the beach and there's like, oh, there's seals everywhere. Ah. Uh, literally, they were just li- they were just lounging around grunting making weird noises kind of like flobbing about like nice. like, like the pokemon scene did you get too close uh no i mean yeah i literally that we were about as close as me to you really that's yeah. very close yeah so we're about, about six seven feet away from each other yeah for context um so yeah so i got some really nice close-up shots of them i need to upload them and bring them in yeah, so you do can that. gawp at my do excellence that. Um, or lack of and be like oh sorry your camera your photography quality was a bit poor there um, but yeah no I got some really nice shots of, cool. of some seals and some landscapes because I love landscapes uh, but yeah no loving the camera overall gorgeous nice yes. big thumbs up from me stuff. Um, but yeah otherwise back to the sort of actual technology that's new um, AMD obviously yep. the people behind uh, Radon graphics cards and various CPUs had a very productive CES 2020 uh, where they were revealing a new range of processors that have more power than i7s but use less wattage. Okay. So more power efficient can be used, obviously, in laptops, make your laptop battery last longer, uh, with also having a bit more juice. Uh, they've also got some new kind of mid-range graphics cards on the way in the sort of 200 to 250 price mark, uh, which apparently can uh, be a 1660 Ti. That's what in I currently terms, have installed in In terms of computer. performance. Uh, for about 210 quid so not too shabby uh, and they also revealed some partnerships with um, Lenovo I think it was and uh, might have been Acer I can't remember what the other company was uh, looking at some new super powerful laptops obviously running these new kind of chipsets uh, which the graphics chip and the normal processing chip can work together uh, and basically make your laptop even quicker so you can edit on the go, cool. um, much like all them vloggers uh, and all that kind of stuff. And then the last one which we saw, which looked quite bizarre, was Alienware uh, have made a portable PC that looks very much like a Nintendo Switch, uh, but instead you can play PC games on it. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, there's a uh, Linus Tech Tips video, uh, where I can't remember his name for the life of me, but I love when he's presenting stuff. Uh, where he's looking at this thing called the Alienware UFO Custom, or something along those lines is what it was called. Um, And it literally looks like a Nintendo Switch in handheld form. A little bit bigger, slightly bigger screen. Oh, yeah, it does. Um, It looks like they've literally just taken the the bits off an Xbox One controller, lumped them on the sides, made this plastic housing, made it a lot more, by the sound of it, comfortable and ergonomic to hold. Um, And then uh, the demo they were playing, they were playing some F1 2019 on it, and it looked smooth as butter, buttery smooth. This article here says, Alien Concept UFO is a Switch killer that plays PC games. Looks looks interesting. Um, Mm. No idea how much that will cost, though. Easily a grand, it's Alienware. Yeah, and uh, it looks like you can actually take the, the, well, let's call them Joy-Cons. It's like you can take them off and and essentially make an Xbox controller. The only thing that looks interesting about it is, one, yes, expensive, um, and two, surely Nintendo have some sort of pattern against this. It looks oddly similar. Yes. But obviously it's a different architecture and you can't play Smash Bros on it. Or yeah. Or anything Nintendo. Well, so. that's the reason yeah. I've got my Switch. I, I've not yeah. got off it all of the, all of the, uh, of the break. And uh, this doesn't appeal to me. It's essentially, well... Your computer. Yeah. But you can't play Nintendo games. No. Interesting. It looks cool, though. Interesting, interesting concept, interesting. though. Yeah. It's, it, it's quite strange seeing someone kind of take on that sort of Nintendo portability that we know and love. Yeah, but yeah, that pretty much rounds up tech news. Unless cool. you've spotted anything, Mister Steve. Uh, don't think so. I probably will. Did you get think any tech the... over Crimbo? Uh, I asked for some games because I like playing games over the Christmas break. Nice. Uh, so I was lucky enough to get myself a couple Switch games. Uh, in regards to tech, I got the backpack, uh, a camera bag, which was really nice. Just one from Curry's, uh, an SD card holder, which was lovely as well. I've got a new mouse for work here Wee. from Will. It's nice and light up. It looks dope. Got a little uh, floaty ball from you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was really nice. I got. I, I was very spoiled by my uh, my family and my in-laws. So, yeah, it's very, very nice. I say in-laws because they pretty much gave me an, a, an equivalent Christmas to my actual family. It was really nice, really nice Aww. touch. Shout out to them. Don't think I'll ever listen to this. They're not techie people, but, yeah, Who knows? they were really you lovely. They got me a lot of uh, American football stuff. Sweet. Which was really nice. I was very, very privileged, very blessed. Um, what about you? Um, 
I got I got set. I I I, blah, 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 blah. I also pulled the trigger on getting a camera bag, obviously for my new camera. Yes. Uh, got one uh, from actually John Lewis in the end. Yes. And because I got it in a different color that wasn't black, I saved myself fifteen pounds. Wow. I what was color like, is it? Gray. Blue. Nice. And I was like, no, I'm done with that. Um, otherwise, I got uh, this lovely water bottle. I'm very nice. Now, hang on. Proper metal. <laughs> um, it makes a nice clonk. Mm. Um, what else did I get? I got some other like random bits and bobs. Um, yeah, no, no, quite nice. Lots of buildy things. I find Christmas at this age is more for stuff that you'd like, but you wouldn't necessarily ever want to spend your own money on. Yes. Uh, it's, yeah, it's the luxuries over necessities is a good Christmas presents because mm. I didn't need any of the little games that I got, but I've had a good old time sitting and playing them, nice. Pokemon being one of them. Yes. It's been good. Very nice. Good recommendation by yourself. And no worries. Got your back, Prof. Um, no, I'll always recommend Pokemon. Everybody it's good. Has. Very, very nice to get back on that. Should we move on? But yeah. Yes, I think we should move on. Uh, so, uh, well, that, yeah, pretty much rounds up tech news. Thanks, Will. <laughs> I, I don't know where else to go from there. Uh, but yeah, anyways, tune of the week. Let's hear what I've been listening to. So, uh, track of the week this week. I'm going to pre- preface this uh, with an article from uh, this week's newsletter, which obviously courtesy of the great Steve. Nice. Uh, which is the BBC Sound of 2020. It's the five artists they believe uh, are going to be the sound of 2020 and be like really big and cool. Um, previous people who've won it in, in the past have been Adele. I've heard she's big. Yeah. And Stormzy. I've heard he's big. Yep. So yeah, various artists have done it. Um, so this week I've picked uh, one of the artists that has uh, made it through to the final five, uh, getting in the fifth spot, uh, is a band called Inhaler. Uh, and the track I've picked is one called Ice Cream Sunday, mainly nice. because it made me slightly hungry. Um, but the interesting fact about the band Inhaler is they uh, their lead singer, uh, Elijah, is actually the son of Bono. Oh, wow. Yeah. I thought you were going to say that they were asthmatic or something. <laughs> <laughs> now, that would be a great name. Be, they're they're just in case you were sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, we're going. Um, but yeah, no, no, sir. So lead singer is uh, Elijah Hewson. Uh, which is Paul Hewson, Bono, uh, as you may know him, uh, lead man of U2. Uh, it's his son. Cool. But uh, well, apparently in like various articles uh, and obviously things they've written about, uh, they've tried their best not to use like their dad, their dad to get in places, yeah. which I've quite liked. Um, so they've done like they've done the kind of like the well, what could be like the club pub scene, uh, like on under their own steam, uh, which I really like the sound of. And uh, like his his vocals sound really similar to quite like old U two, but more indie and less kind of like edgy rock, which is obviously like seventies and eighties U two used to be. Yeah, uh, more seventies uh, than eighties. But no, really good. You can you can definitely hear his dad in his voice a little bit, which I, I quite like because I like U two anyway. Um, but no, I would I would highly recommend giving it a gander. Subtle nostalgia. Yes. Cool. For for any old school fans like me who have listened to you two, or your parents might listen to you two, you might be sick of them, be like, oh god, or you might be like, yeah, still a beautiful day. Nice. <laughs> Luckily, I'm not suffering from vertigo. <laughs> um, so yeah, so it's uh, Inhaler Ice Cream Sunday. Give it a listen. It's part of the BBC Sound of 2020. Uh, they generally know what they're talking about. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and if you do want to find out who is the number one on their uh, list, you can listen into Animax show on Radio 1 on Thursday, i.e. tomorrow or today. When you listen to this, it'll be today yeah. uh, in the evening. So give that a gander if that's your cup of tea and you can hear whoever uh, wins number one. Hopefully it's Bieber Doobie, that um, artist oh, yeah. I that's recommended cool. ages ago. And look at me. I'm on trend. Oh, my cool. Down with the kids. Um, <laughs> down with the kids. I'm not down with the kids in any way whatsoever. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much. Otherwise, check out the Where's My Kit Bad playlist on Spotify if you want to hear all the songs uh, from uh, all the previous tracks of the week. And I'll also add this one in as well. Winner, winner. Nice. Wicked. Shall we move on to a little bit of what have we been watching? Yes. <laughs> yes. Right, actually, put the right fader up. That would help, wouldn't it? Now, Will, obviously in his infinite illness, has said, I would like to be part of the podcast from afar. Like he was that one time oh, yes. a while ago. He seems to be the only person who's been ill of Mr. Pod. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God, that sounds like you were making sinister notes about it. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Here's what it is. I get act mel a day, keeps me at the pod every day. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> mm, mm. well, that's Yakult, isn't it? Is it what? Uh, well, yak, you're one Yakult. 
Yeah. Mm. Isn't Yakult Denon or something like that? Mm, Denon. I don't know. No. Yes, you're right. It's Yakult. Yeah. But I was, yeah. I've never had a Yakult because they apparently it's in the name. They make you yak. Yeah. So, but Ooh. I like Actimels. Actimels are nice. Hmm. Nice. Right. Random so, takeaway. Sorry about that. Nice. Thanks. Uh, so I'm gonna give uh, I'm gonna give Mr. Devro a buzz and uh, see if see if he's alive. Love a good ringing noise. Sounds like a soundboard. Hello, Will Devro. Hello. Hey, it's Will Devro. <laughs> Hello. Over the phone. You're live on the pod. <laughs> Please do not swear. I'm live. <laughs> <laughs> or alive, or just live. Both, both. Nice. <laughs> how how are you feeling, bud? Uh, a bit bit worse for wear, but I've made it virtually to the podcast. Nice. So that's Con- the main thing. Congratu- that's I care about. Congratulations. Um, well, we tried to impersonate you earlier. It's mildly amusing. You may oh, wish to you may go. you may wish to listen to this back. It's good. I'll have to tune in. I'll have to... <laughs> <laughs> Can you be our listener in Peru? Definitely. Nice. Uh, otherwise, Fiber. Will Defro, what have you been watching? Over the Christmas holidays. Whoa, we're going straight into it. Yeah, All why right. not? Why not? Let's live life on the edge. I like that. Get, get well, you while you're not coughing. This is my thinking. All right. <laughs> well, over over Christmas, um, I did lots of travelling, so I didn't get too much time to watch it. I say that, although I've, I've watched two full se- well, three full seasons, really. But, Jeez Louise. Um, we're just watching, like, the M4 motorway pass quite a lot, quite, quite a lot of Netflix, as, nice. as, as, as always. Um, you season two was up there. That was very enjoyable. Um, I think it delivered on most fronts. To be honest, we, uh, it was very, um, very, very binge worthy. Are you it in was his? Definitely something. That are you in the box now? Sorry. Are you in the box now? Is that why you're not on the pod? Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, <laughs> I, I understand that reference now. <laughs> you do. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah. I mean. What were your guys? Have you guys seen? You, I think you've both seen season two now, haven't you? Yep. <sighs> well, I've seen season two, but not seen season one. I don't understand. Well, oh, would my you like? Days. Would you like context no. to yes. how this happened? No. So what? No, you don't want context, or no, oh, I haven't I just seen can't season believe, one. Can't believe you. You can't believe so, you've done that. So well, so obviously when I was away um, with over New Year's with my <laughs> uni mates, uh, they've all seen uh, season one of you. Well, not all of them, I'd say, because uh, there were ten of us total. So I think about seven of them had seen you season one and were like, oh my God, you season two. And I was just like, what is this? I don't know what this is. I've not watched it. I don't really care. Um, so I was so I, I was very like, I don't want to watch this midway through a season. Like I don't want to leap in at season two. So they tried to give me like a basic context. Go, oh, there's this guy. There's a box killing. Should we hit the I'm spoiler like, warning? Yeah. Oh, and it's no. like, oh, yeah, I really, I genuinely needed this. We're going to talk about you, Netflix, season, well, season one and two. Season one and two. Um, so I haven't seen season one in its entirety. I just know a rough subplot of guy bad, guy stalk girl, girl die, um, other girl live or something. Um, oh. And yeah, exactly. So I'm, I, so I'm there, sat there watching season two, episode one of a program I have no context for going, why is this guy a weirdo? I have no context to this. So what did I do instead? Whipped out the Switch and played some Pokemon So because it was on in the background. So I've absorbed most of season two, kind of looking up when everyone's like, oh no, and I kind of look up and go, whoa. <laughs> so I've, I've seen it. Uh, but you don't, it takes it, the but nothing, out, nothing yeah. makes sense. So I'm gonna to have to go back and watch season one to go. Oh, it's just not. Yeah, yeah. it's gonna be like it's gonna be it's a. Such oh, an, it's yeah. gonna be such an anticlimactic oh. watch. Watch it as a prequel. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm gonna reverse time. Um. So yeah. So I I can't really rate season two because I was like, eh. I really enjoyed it. Um. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't love love that much. Nice. Um. She was. She wasn't as alluring as Beck was as a character. Mm. Um, I don't know why. I think it was maybe the whole money thing, and uh, with forty being in it as well. I just, I didn't get also, that dynamic. That really annoyed me. Forty love. Yeah. What tennis? Oh my god! I was today years old when I realised. <laughs> <laughs> today I learned. Wait, what happened? Are the internet cut out or something? Oh, uh, lost, no. So, so obviously, you, you know the cat. You know the girl uh, attention in season two is called Love. Yes. And her brother's called Forty. Yeah. Tennis. 40 Love. Yeah. yeah. I never knew that. I was today no. years That's old. That's the first thing I went, why are they named after tennis? 
do, do they have another brother called like Henman or something? Deuce. <laughs> Deuce. <laughs> <Some> <laughs> <point>. <laughs> Or their other son, quite please. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, like uh, yeah, they, they, it was they were a bit they're a bit different. But it, I assume it's very LA. Um, it, it was oh good. I, uh, I, I enjoyed it a lot. Of, I've enjoyed the memes. The memes have been fantastic. Um, and I think my last kind of note on it is I'm kind of hoping for a third season. Question mark. Yes, I think there is one. I think there's definitely one on the cards. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'd like it. I so, just like how original uh, Joe is, or Will as a character. I find oh, him nice. very yes. interesting. It's I different. think something like a big plot hole that kind of ruined it a bit for me is, you know, the um, his container place. Yeah. Um, one time, he catches someone there, and he says, "Oh, I've got like cameras hooked up to see." You know who's coming and going. Yeah. And then obviously the person dies in the box, and he's like, "Oh, who did it? Who did it?" Why does he like, go back what... and look at the cams? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I also thought, would you not argue there's a similar plot hole of how the hell did he build that pyroplex or whatever it's called uh, box in that warehouse just unnoticed? Like, I get, yeah. I get the underground in the in the in the uh, the bookstore because it wasn't made by him. Uh, sorry, yeah. slight spoiler for season it did, one. There, it, it had a enough. different purpose <gasps> as well. Yeah, but um, it 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 was an odd thing to have been able to somehow make and get those huge panes of glass into some sort of st- you know, what what we'd class as a lock and store. Yeah, a and big a big yellow. Not box. ask any questions. And mm. the thing that irritated me more than anything is they said it was soundproof. No, it wasn't. It was about thirty holes around the outside. It wasn't soundproof. True. It was not soundproof. No. They mm-hmm. should have done better with that. As as a soundie can confirm. But yeah, yeah no, pre- loopholes aside, I, I still did enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, I still enjoyed it. I still enjoyed it. But I'm, I'm with you on that. I'm looking forward to another season. <laughs> Do you find it strange that... I read an article. Do you find it strange that women find Joe and his personality, not his looks, take his looks out of it, his personality... Well, I guess the, the looks kind of fall into it. His personality sexually alluring. They find it like they find it really attractive. Um, I, Joe as a character apparently is super attractive. I'm not a girl, so I can't comment. Did you find it strange? That is strange. I find that strange. But that d- is a bit strange. I thought it was strange, but then is everyone being I, No, no, no. I I thought back and people thought Ted Bundy <coughs> was super attractive. And do you not think it's just a bad boy mentality that yeah, people were enjoying? Because be. when I first read it, I was like, yeah, that's so weird. I'm with you, but then I thought, well, not really, because that on the run kind of fictional fantasy mm. is is quite alluring yeah um so it made sense but that that's a big thing to come out of it is if what is society to think that joe goldberg is is you know the epitome of of, of attraction and i found mm. it quite an interesting uh mm. character study oh uh, it's like not even a character study just a personal it's, it's quite similar to like dexter i don't know if you've, you've seen yes seen dexter. yes I, i've, I've yeah. seen i've seen the good seasons of dexter before it went wrong yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. I, I, he, share, it, he shares a lot with Dexter. Yeah. Didn't you're right. Dexter get dropped in? As in, like a Dexter reference was in you. Yeah. Yes. Doesn't love be like, yeah, oh, you're doing some Dexter yeah. stuff. Like, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's good. What would you rate it? Uh, I'll start with Bale. Only seeing the second season, what would you rate it? I mean, I mean, but by by like the last three episodes, I was playing less Switch and watching more of you. Well. Um, and going, why is this guy so weird? And then obviously the twist at the end. Um, where I was like, "Oh damn!" I kind of loved um, that. I I, I did oh, quite like great. that. I I thought that was a really nice twist that I wasn't actually expecting. Um, I mean, I'd I'd probably give it a seven because I've got no basis uh, to work from. But I'm sure if I watch season one, that might creep up. See, I think I'm I'm with you. I'm I'm going to go ahead and give it a nine, only because obviously it only doesn't get a ten because of the couple of the loophole issues, and I didn't love soundproofing. I didn't love Steve. love. <laughs> um, so I gave it a nine because it was an original idea. It still is really, really well executed. It's constructed really well from Joe as a character. You sympathise really a lot with such a strange gentleman, but you get over his weirdness in the first season. You kind of root for him in the second season, which is mm. odd. Um, so I'll give it a nine in a, as a total season one and two combined. Um, yeah, I, I really I, I'd agree with you, Steve. I, I'd go for a nine as well. I think. Sweet. Yeah, I think. Reference, reference. I think in this season, although his love interest wasn't as strong, I think all the surrounding c- characters were by far a lot stronger. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm like with all you. the people in this complex, the forty, even he was good. The bookstore owner, the the one who works there. Yeah, um, forty he was great. There's... Forty for me got better over the series. I thought oh, he was yeah, lame. Yeah, I didn't like him lame first, as hell. I, I loved him. Yeah, but do you not see? 
did you not see what who I don't know who who made it or who directed it, but I, I noticed that quite quite quickly and I picked up and I was like, it's really smart because you see Forty in the beginning how every person sees him besides love. Yes. The more you're around him, the more you start to sympathize with him and you feel the same way love feels for him, which mm. is really interesting as that develops. Yeah. I thought they'd done that really well because I'm with you. I thought the guy was, oh, the, the epitome of a hype beast. He's just so <laughs> cringeworthy. But by the end, I was I really rooted for him. Um, and yeah, there you go. Nice. Yeah. Uh, what else have you been watching, Will Dev? Oh, cannot recommend enough Witcher. Uh, <clears> well, Witcher Which, is on my list. Is is next after oh, Designated Survivor. Goodness. I've heard it's good. So, it's um, it's a bit strange because what well, on Rotten Tomatoes from top critics, it's only rated thirty five percent. That's that's rubbish. But then on audience score, it's ninety eight. Wow, that's a huge yeah. gulf. Yeah, so it was pretty divisive. Um, but I, I'm a bit more biased because I've played uh, Witcher 2 and 3. Yeah. Um, and I kind of know what, I guess, what's going to happen. But even then, they still kind of, the way they've done stuff, uh, they've kind of added a few twists already that, mm. um, or uh, ways of exampling things. But you guys won't know much different if you haven't played the Witcher games. Correct. Um there's a few there's a few tricky concepts that they have to try and get through um but when you come out of episode 1 you just got to keep an open mind and then you got to, and then it settles down a bit more but episode 1's quite messy um then and then yeah it gets down, it just yeah. gets better every episode really and the uh, the best bit is that the showrunner has said that Ed Sheeran will not be appearing in the series no matter what Huh, thank nice. the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> how many how many episodes are there? Is it like a full series uh, or is 10, it like a I mini think. one? Yeah. Oh, it's a mini 10, one. Cool. 10, yeah. What and they're all you... awesome. You you honestly give it a watch. It it does definitely scratch that Game of Thrones itch, but uh, I don't know. It's something about having a central character compared to like Game of Thrones, where you know arguably it's it's a bit of everything yeah um i don't know it just pushes the story on a bit more what um, would you what would got, you give it uh nine nine and a half Ooh, wow high would praise. you yeah. would you recommend it to yeah. somebody if you said to them like you've not played the witch games but if you like game of thrones you'd like this would that be a correct <laughs> statement yeah i'd say so i think it's one of those shows that after you finish the season you're probably going to look up a lot of lore around certain concepts and characters and stuff like that because am I right in saying mm. that they also? I heard this from a friend that they, uh, for people who don't know, the witches, the witcher hunts like demons and and, and stuff. Yeah. Uh, is it one essentially demon per episode or one enemy per episode? Is that the way the structure was similarly oh, to go? Uh, not really. I don't. I wouldn't say it's like that. Um, there's definitely, you know, may, maybe that is the case, but it doesn't feel like that. Okay. Like it, it does feel like a continuous story. It doesn't feel like one quest per episode sort of thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. It's it's a lot deeper than that. Interesting. Cool. Yeah, well, you'll enjoy. You you'll both enjoy. It's it definitely. it's definitely on my watch list. Yeah, I just likewise. need to. Yeah. I need to finish my series first. Then it's then it's yeah. next on the hit list. Have you uh, been yeah, watching so... anything else, Mister Will, or is that it? Um, just on YouTube, Ooh. this amazing YouTuber called Girlfriend Reviews. Girlfriend um, reviews. Oh, you you mentioned yeah. this. What? So yeah, right. So, so is is it a guy reviewing his girlfriends, or is yeah. it a girlfriend reviewing her girlfriends? So essentially, <laughs> what it is. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's, there's a couple. Uh, you don't ever hear from the guy, but the girl basically, when she met this guy, he introduced her to the world of video games. Amazing. And. Since then, she, when they play a game, she reviews it from the perspective of someone who's never played a game. Oh wow! Okay, um, that's, that's quite. So, neat. so she she talks about like what mechanics seem like good and intuitive, um, and there's a lot of things where like to us we kind of take for granted. Like uh, you know, uh, for an example, in, in Skyrim, there's a compass at the top that points your way to the quest marker. Yeah. When when she played it, she like she didn't even know it was there. <laughs> or what anything oh, meant yes. but and it, not, it never really explains it but we take that for granted yeah because so well, quite... because we've been trained to know what it is yeah exactly exactly so um she kind of breaks down and she her like kind of slogans like it's this video is not review it's a review of watching someone play it sort of thing so yeah. um she gets feedback from her boyfriend about things he'd liked and didn't like 
Um, and yeah, she kind of gives her own little perspective on it. And the effort she puts in and the memes she puts in are amazing. So what's the, uh, what, what's the channel called? Girlfriend Reviews. I've, nice. I've, we binged probably like 10, 15 episodes. Oh my God. Yeah, it, like it's honestly so good. Check it out. Um, highly recommended. Nice. I'll put that on my yeah. uh, my watch list for later. Yeah, you'll enjoy yeah, it. I just, I just subbed. Oh, look at that. Got a sub straight <laughs> away out of like, nowhere. Cool. I subbed to that. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I just subbed. Oh, nice. Boom. Done. <laughs> look, look at you, Will, marketing for this channel. Yeah. Oh, I, oh, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, have you been... Yeah, uh... that wraps me up. Oh, I it think. wraps you up. Amazing. Yeah. Well, okay, yeah consist- no cinema views yet, but hopefully soon. Uh, Steve, would you like to go next? What's You've got line? a lot more than I have. So That's I think true. you should sandwich it with a lot of stuff. All right. Designated Survivor. Have either of you watched oh, Designated Survivor? Yeah, I've watched oh, the first yeah, like, four or five episodes. I finished all of season one. I finished all of season one before I went away for New Year's because I was like determined, must watch. Um, and I'm about halfway through season two now. Uh, season mm. one, I'm thinking, is significantly better than two, I think. But overall, I'm very much enjoying where it's going. Keith Sutherland playing the president is a great Brilliant. idea. If he was Amer- if he was actually American, I'd recommend he goes for presidency. <laughs> uh, but he's Canadian, so he can't. Um, but no, uh, r- really gripping, really good. Uh, the sort of basic premise for those that don't know um, is essentially... Uh, Keith Sutherland's character is named the designated survivor uh, so that if something happens to all of the cabinet uh, for the sort of American presidency uh, then they would automatically become president something happens uh, everyone dies he's the only one left and he's like oh I'm the president and it's basically just him that literally no. happens in the first yeah. five minutes um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> that literally it's, it's in the trailer um, so yeah so it's basically his story of going hmm I'm the president. What do I do? Yeah. And it's um, I, I found him a really like endearing, a really kind of it's the kind of president you would want as your president, uh, I think. But otherwise, <clears throat> what, what I it. really enjoyed about that show were the amount of twists and turns. Yes, uh, it just you're always guessing, and you can never quite put your put your you know like nail the idea down. So I, I really enjoyed that. Also, what what's her name? Hannah Wells. How many times can she get hit on the head? <laughs> <laughs> It's ridiculous. It's like clonk. Agent, oh, Wells. Agent <laughs> Wells, you've been knocked out again. Um, but yeah, it was. You know what? I'm, I, I'm liking it so far. I'm. De- it's definitely an eight for me. But it could nice. go up. Yeah, I'd give it. An, um, I'd give it the whole but yeah, it I is. Really it. It's great fun. Uh, otherwise, kind of segueing ish. Uh, Angel has fallen. <laughs> Is that the most recent one? Yes. I've never seen any of that has. Have you not? Apparently, They're all right. Apparently, that was the best of the trilogy. Um, I would give it a six. It was. I Ooh. mean, if if you want an action film, yes. If you want anything other than an action film, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it was. Uh, personally, I think the other one that came out when the first the first one came out, White House Down, the one with Channing Tatum in it, is better mm. because Channing Tatum is better than Jamal Butler. Um, but isn't, no, isn't the other one Olympus has fallen? Yeah, Olympus has fallen is the middle one. Oh, okay. It might be the middle child, or it might be the first one. I can't. No, no, Olympus is, it, this, is the first this one. This one with Morgan Freeman, isn't it? Uh, yes, this is the one with yeah. Morgan Freeman. Um, but yeah, Angel has fallen. It was all right. Uh, the plot was a bit kind of oh no, we have problem mm. guns. Um, yeah, so it was it was quite a it was if you want like just kind of like a brain number and just want to watch some Gerard Butler action then. Uh, and him with a slight underplot of I've got arthritis, so I can't move as much. Um, it was it was all right. It was adequate. Um, otherwise, uh, totally not segueing at all. Abominable, adorable animated film. Loved it. That was uh, obviously Steve's feature a few weeks ago in the newsletter. Yeah. Uh, abominable, absolutely adorable. Loved it to bits. Um, cool. Great. Great animation, really nice, humble story. I'd easily give it nine out of ten all day. Cool. Glorious, oh my goodness. highly, wow. uh, highly recommended animated film. Um, wow. And the, the Yeti's quite adorable too. Um, but yeah, would if you like animations in any way, definitely what get a copy and watch it. Um, I finally saw Joker at long last. Oh wow! Uh, beginning, eh, end. Ooh, uh, for me. So I'm I'm only going to give it a seven. Wow, that's low, man. I know that the the begin I, I, the beginning did not sit well with me, and I don't know. I can't put my finger on it. You, I don't you know didn't what see it in the is. cinema, did you? No, uh. might be that. Uh, but the but the whole sort of ending sequence, like the last kind of half an hour, 
gorgeous yeah that alone is 10 out of 10 but the beginning for me was a bit lacking wow. for what i was after um so i only gave it seven uh cool. otherwise okay. i've seen stir wars episode nine obviously have you neither of you have seen it have you no, no. yet to see it's okay it's K. It's K. <laughs> I'm I'm not Ross, so I won't obviously go. Oh my God, it's great Ooh, Star Wars. <laughs> um, uh, but no, it was it was. I think it was better than Episode Eight. Well, that's good. But I don't think as good as Seven in the kind of like trilogy. Mm. This like mini trilogy. To be honest, with those films, I just like being in that universe. Mm. I don't really. I'm not too fussed about whatever. I, I, I just like seeing the characters in that big universe. I mean, for me, lots more lightsaber battles. Very pro that. Um, there was some weird, there were some weird force things going on, which I was not a fan of because there was oh. no explanation to what they were. They were literally just, oh, here's this new mechanic that makes all the things easy. Um, so that that felt a little bit kind of handholdy almost. Uh, but you you'll know it when you watch it, and you'll go, okay. oh what the hell is this um so i'm i'm, I'm not going to spoil anything but it's a weird yeah, power no, no. that some people have now okay. um but yeah otherwise lots of lots of uh lots of space shooting sequences with obviously the pew pew of lasers um like the lightsaber battle amount um i thought uh the guy who plays poe i thought would try to try to put comedy in a bit too much uh, but it kind of worked because everyone else was quite like you know deadpan um otherwise john, john boyega's character i thought should have got a bit more screen time personally because uh, mm. i i rate him quite highly as an actor uh, and i thought he was quite good in the previous two uh, so i personally thought he should have got a bit more um i thought the ending though was the tweeest thing ever i was like oh goodness what i'm watching like little house on the prairie or something <laughs> um but yeah so that the ending for me was like kind of oh cootsy goo uh which for me was a bit blah um oh. but i mean overall i'd definitely give it easily a seven um better maybe seven and a half you know uh yeah give it seven and a half um because yeah definitely better than eight i don't think as good as seven okay for me personally um otherwise i don't think i've watched anything else um the, the new educate the new series of sex educations on the way for season two and i quite like season one oh, that was, yes. quite, that was yeah. quite good fun uh with that guy's name who i can't remember because it's quite bizarre um who's the lead actor in it jack whitehall no not jack no that's bad education oh right no um i can't i'll, I'll look up his name uh in a sec uh but yeah that's that's apparently on the way in like two weeks time which i, I really oh, like cool. season one uh, and season yeah, two too. could that be more good. of the same but yeah, that's what I've been watching. Steve, what no. about you? Well, I'll, I'll kick it off with uh, some animation. I rewatched Finding Dory, uh, which was good. I've already seen that twice. I've so not seen Finding Dory. Finding Dory's a good watch. Nice. It's a good it's watch. It's good, yeah. It's it scratches cool. the Nemo itch, if we're going with that. It's really funny. It's got some good bits in it. Um, I think it, it did... It, the plot line's actually quite interesting. Um and it's just a sweet film. It's a good film. Uh, you know, give it eight out of ten. You know, it it does a job. Ticks the boxes. You know, hats off. Well done, Disney Pixar. Nice. Hats off. On the other side of that animation bridge, I watched. Yes. Uh, do you know uh, Jim Parsons? Yes. You know who Jim Parsons is. Uh, guy plays, plays Sheldon, Sheldon Cooper. Big Bang Theory. Yep. Um, and do you know that singer uh, Rihanna? Uh, yeah, I've I've heard of her. Yeah. I think she's a big deal. Ponder replay. Yep. Um, Umbrellas. They collaborated in a in an animation called Home. Have you ever heard of the film Home? Is it wait? Is this the one where they're like parrots in Rio or something? No, 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 no that's no, no, Rio. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> so, I, I, it rings a bell. Yeah, so it's called Home. I, I thought also you were going to say that they're mer they're collaborating on a musical project, and I'd be like, okay. Oh, so <laughs> the, the description is actually quite quite interesting. It, Sheldon, not Sheldon, Jim Parsons <laughs> plays a character called O because literally as it says he goes, hi, my name's O. The reason I'm called O is because when everyone sees me and then they always go, oh, and that's why he's called O. Um, yeah, a bit of a kind of, it's a weird film. Uh, it's actually got a higher rating than I expected on IMDb. It's got 6.6. .6. I'd give it like a 5. It's quite funny um, but I think it's one of those issues that actors have is I thought Rihanna actually her character was actually quite good because her voice wasn't that distinguishable. But Jim Parsons' voice, it was Sheldon Cooper, <laughs> and you can't escape mm. that. 
Um, and I think if it was somebody else, I probably would have enjoyed it more. Um, but it was like, have you ever watched Big Bang Theory and Sheldon's been either drunk or something and he's, he's just really dopey? Yeah. That is that is this O character in Home. Hey. It is quite funny. Oh. It'd be good for a kid's film. It's actually done really well. Gross three hundred and eighty six million in the box office. Oh Damn. wow, that's oh, not my bad. goodness. Not bad at all. Um but yeah, basically it's it's a jokey little premise where this little cute alien race um uh, come to the UK and uh, not <laughs> to to Earth um and yeah. basically take over Earth because they're running away from another alien um that they that they stole something from. Uh, I'll leave that as is. It's a cute little watch. It was on BBC over Christmas. Uh, I am only gonna give it a five out of ten, um, because it, it isn't great. Um it doesn't do anything special it's just a silly little film um besides that i had only ever actually i've only actually watched you um and another little series that's completely irrelevant um so <laughs> i've not really completely watched relevant. all that much obviously i've re- I rewatched a few animations um I, I i spent in the space of 24 hours i spent over 10 hours watching american football so that's probably nice. where all my free time mm. went um and you'll probably notice that up until february 2nd that most of my what have i been watching it's the old american hand egg so i might be quite low nice. on the old uh, <laughs> documentary not documentary um yeah documenting my visuals well when theory. you said re-watching animations did you re-watch ratatouille when that was on the bbc no i've never seen ratatouille Ratatouille. I've right. heard it's amazing. Right. I've heard it's second like... time round watching Ratatouille as a, as an older person. I was like, man, this is absolute quality. Yeah, Tell Ratatouille is great. I've missed two films off the list. What outrageous! That I, that I actually watched uh, whilst I was in Wales. Both of them are are, um, are claymations. <laughs> I watched two claymations. One okay. of them, Wallace I... and Gromit. Yes, no, I watched which Curse one? of the Were Rabbit for the first time. Oh, Never oh, seen good. it. That's I good. could not get over how well animated that is. You can see the th- like the thumbprints in the clay. It's crazy it's how so good, it good is. isn't it? And then I rewatched Chicken Run. Oh, classic! How amazing yes. was that? The only plot hole I had with it. It's not really a spoiler because the <laughs> film came out in 1999. I'm not going to spoil a warning that. <laughs> but there's a moment where a lady falls off like this chicken made flight machine falls into like this barn into like this thermal oven of sorts and it blows up right and the building like is fully blown up like bricks are everywhere and she's completely fine and it really irritated me but i don't know why i I know it's a kids film but it really irritated me that she had no inconsistent pyro she had no injuries and she was at the center of the explosion anyway (laughs) That's all I've really got on that. A lot of uh, yeah, a lot of silly stuff I was watching. Uh, as a, you took up most of my time because um, I do work another job outside being at the college, so I do work in the day, and then I would go and watch you know a couple of episodes of you in the evening, which was good. Um, so all in all, it was actually quite nice. And as we discussed earlier in the podcast, I spent a lot of time playing on my Nintendo Switch. Yeah, that took up mm. a lot of my time because uh, my girlfriend watches Gossip Girl. So Never I've watched, I've watched a lot of Gossip Girl in the background, similarly yeah. to you. Strange M- program. Me watching you, yeah. That One of the only weird. things I've ever seen her watch when I've gone, nah, not for me. Really not for me. Um, yeah, very weird. Um, so yeah, that's me. That's it. Not very much. Cool. But, but yeah, there you go. That's a jam-packed episode. That is a very, very content-filled yeah. episode. Well, Will, Yeah. thank you very much for joining us from afar. Thank Hope- you for, for following me up. Hopefully your uh, your um, your cold will dissipate and you'll be back to work in a jiffy. We can we can hope we can hope. <laughs> um, but yeah, otherwise uh, you've been listening to the Where's My Kit Bag podcast. Uh, welcome to the year two thousand and twenty. Hey. We're here to stay. Mm. We ain't going nowhere. Keep your eyes peeled. Twenty twenty vision on twenty twenty. That's amazing. Nice. Yeah, there you go. Keep your eyes peeled. Twenty twenty. I love it. Is um, that a title? I mean, it could be. Twenty twenty. Well, I mean, I, mean I, I did. I did write in something that you did say earlier, uh, which you get make, a podcast, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. which did make me chuckle. Um, so that that might be the problem retired, but it might change. Nice. I like um, that one better, actually. But yeah. Uh, otherwise, uh, I've been James. I'm Will, and I'm Steve, and you've been listening to the Where's My Kit Bag podcast. Thanks for listening to the Where's My Kit Bag podcast. Please feel free to drop us a comment about anything you want us to cover in the section below or hit us up on Instagram or Twitter using at F6 Media Film. Thanks to our Peruvian listeners. <laughs>